which includes the whole process of anal pasting, which is what that one was doing over there, marking their territory on a stick. This time of the morning, it is time to warm up after a long chilly night, all tucked up together in their burrows. Now it's time to come and sunbathe and get ready for the day ahead. And that means playing, grooming, reaffirming their bonds, anal pasting, playing. Look at them. We've just had so many spectacular dwarf mongoose sightings recently. They've got lots of little ones. And the young ones are oh, very, very playful. And they enjoy each other's company. It means resting, means climbing, exploring. And these guys have got so curious. I suspect, Ferg, although I can't see, I actually think we've got some right under our vehicle. I think we do. We've got them right next... There we go, you can just see the movement. This is the wonderful thing about dwarf mongoose, is they, they're, now, they're now sniffing our tires. On the left side, unfortunately, so I can't see them. You can see the rest of the family playing, though. And you just get some groups that are so relaxed that you get to watch their behavior and their playfulness. They're having so much fun. <laughs> running in, running out. The little ones responding to squeaks and calls and immediately dashing away and then coming straight back. Now that branch has played scent marker for all of the dwarf mongoose that have come out. And every single one, as soon as they smell it, is then inspired to deposit their own scent upon it. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Does that smell interesting? So many fascinating smells. You can see the difference between the ones that are, I would basically call them sub-adults. <laughs> you go depositing more scents and the fully grown adults and the sub adults are very playful dashing about with the rest of the group <laughs> sure Ferg keeping you guessing there I didn't know which way they were gonna go either come on little ones come and lie out in the Sun that's what I would be doing if I were you. <laughs> now these are the much, much smaller cousins of the track that I asked you earlier, the white-tailed mongoose. And Daniel, you want to know, do we ever see larger mongoose? We do. White-tailed mongoose are nocturnal. They are probably the largest species that you're likely to see on these live safaris, but they're nocturnal and solitary. <laughs> Hello. Oh, bye-bye. Did you get very brave there? Coming to sniff our vehicle. Sorry, Daniel, I'll finish off the sentence in a moment. What are you up to? So, Daniel, yes, we do see lar larger mongoose. There is a mongoose called a water mongoose that is slightly larger than the white-tailed. And I think the drought last year kind of caused them to move on. I never saw one, but I did find tracks of water mongoose around some of the water holes. So they were around. They're also nocturnal. Then in terms of the social mongoose, we do see banded mongoose, but they're far more shy than the tiny little dwarf mongoose. And by the way, we're going to stop, because we've already done that track of the white-tailed mongoose, we are going to stop once these mongoose move off and have a look at the tracks they've left behind here. Now we do occasionally see banded mongoose. For some reason here, they are so shy that we hardly ever get them on camera. I think I've seen them a total of maybe four times in the two years that I've been here. Someone just did a forward roll. All the gymnastics happening here. And then last but not least, the slender mongoose. Again, also quite shy, but we occasionally see them. Oh, Jean, you want to know about mum and dad? and the way that they reproduce and if they stay together for life. 
It's possible but unlikely. Now, the way that things work in a dwarf mongoose society, it's a bit more complex than that, but they basically, they have an alpha male and an alpha female. <laughs> the, oh, ow, that looks sore. Sharp teeth on ear. Now, they do... They do mate for a considerable period of time together. That does not mean that the alpha male will be completely faithful to the female. He might, in fact, mate with some of the lower-ranking females and have little babies through her. Uh, the chances of those babies surviving are uh, quite slim because the alpha female will kill them. And basically she does that because the whole group in a dwarf mongoose society is devoted to looking after her offspring and she doesn't want them to be distracted by other babies as well. But things change. Hierarchies change. You get coups. You get situations where uh, an alpha is killed, and then the situation will change with the dwarf mongoose, and you'll get another alpha coming up, rising up in the ranks. So they're complex, very, very complex social structures. <laughs> and believe it or not, while we watch these guys wrestle, the chances are, when an alpha has to be decided, when there's a situation where a group is without an alpha, it's not usually an antagonistic fight that they go through in order to determine who gets to be the next alpha. It's usually a grooming process. It's decided by shows of affection rather than violence. And they'll gr have grooming competitions where they groom each other to the point that they are sodden, covered in saliva, and one is more exhausted than the other. But that doesn't mean that they don't fight, and they, they will fight in territories, well, in, in situations where one group of dwarf mongoose has invaded their territory. So they are territorial. That's why they do all of the scent marking as well. But there's another situation where you might see an alpha coming up where you didn't have one before. Let's say a male disperses from a group. It might take him a very long time to get accepted into a new dwarf mongoose business. But... If he does come in, and he is big and strong, and he is a, a, a worthwhile leader, he might actually usurp the alpha male's position, and then he will be the one that mates with the alpha female. So it's complex, and there's no set formula to it. And of course, there has to be dispersal, because otherwise there'd be a huge amount of inbreeding. Oh, look at this little one coming, Ferg. Little bit down. Hello, little one. Hello. Okay, wants to come and join the rest of the group that's foraging off to my left, and it's not quite sure about us yet. Sandy, you want to know if the dwarf mongoose are related to rats and mice? No, not closely. They're a completely separate family. They belong to a family known as the Herpestids, Herpestidae family, um, which basically includes the mongoose, the meerkat those sorts of creatures and you'll probably find that they're more closely related to something like a mustelid which would be a ferret or a honey badger so no or an otter no more closely to the, related to those creatures than they are to rodents i'm gonna sit here patiently because i actually think we're gonna have a stunning mongoose sighting while we do james has managed i think to get you a better view of his elephants on